So you can start with your second down. I would love enough, right? For all you have to me. Yes. Yes. Sit with it. Roll your shoulders back. And then close your eyes. Swallow your saliva. Don't be anxious. I know that I have a new face. I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to scold you. It's just fun. So have your throat muscles soft. Swallow your saliva. Breathe. Sit, com sit in a very comfortable position. Swastikasana is the most comfortable position. So it will be nice. If you are very cheap pad, then you just understand. It. We pray, we will say the prayers together. We will begin. Working together, 
together of these two systems. <coughs> the nervous system is another thing. Likewise, you have endocrine system, you have integrative system, you have lymphatic system, you have circulatory system. All those are organ networks. Now, what do I mean by network? It's a collection, it's a group. Okay, that is how. Now we all function, we all have come together as one unit. Each and every one is one one individual. Like that, in our body also, we have so many organs. That so many organs will work together to function as a network. That is what is it is called as a network or a system. Got it? Now, how do I understand? As I told you, how do I understand for today's week regarding today's topic? Uh, how do we understand that I have bones inside my body? There are some things that you can see. Yes, without which I told you that you will not be having a separate form. You will not be able to stand upright. <coughs> right? So it's all this. Yes, yes. I am able to touch my elbow. I am able to touch my knees. I am able to touch my collar bones. I am able to touch my skull. So all these are bony structures, hard structures that are there inside your body. They are bones. Now the muscles, skin, everything will overlap the bones. The nerves will, uh, will run in between these muscle fibers. They are not going to, when you open up a person, you will not be distinctly able to feel. Uh, doctors, anybody doctors here? There are doctors. So you know much better how your system yeah, works. Raise your hand, then only change you ask me. <laughs> Don't be scared. Of the first, what I will say is, I will call your friend. And tell them that whatever I'm telling is true. <laughs> that I'm not blabbering something. That is the most that I will make you do. Okay? So the nerve fibers, uh, you are now move your hands. Where are you going to move? Move your legs, don't eat them also. Move, move your legs around. So you are able to straighten your legs and then bend. Got it? Now these muscle fibers, they don't have to be going alone. The nerves have to work along with the muscle fibers, along with the skeletal system in order for you to move. Got it? That is how these three systems then work together. Every all these networks, so called organ systems that I told you about, they work together as a system, as a group for us to function, for us to survive, for us to be alive. Otherwise, we will invade some diseases. There is going to be a, a imbalance in between these, these organ systems. We will invite diseases, illness, some issues, health issues we will have, or we will be there, as simple as that. Okay? Now, uh, demonstrate this. Whoever is want to do, want to, you can do that. Feel free to do. Come on. Tell us it. Anybody, nobody wants to do. Sad. Jump. You can be there in your own manner. Just be there on your own match. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to participate, yeah. you can participate. Now, which is not a thing. Yeah. It's just treat it as a fun. Okay. Really. Okay. Just be there. Okay. Okay. So that you know the block of cameras on the other side. Yes. Tara said. Krishna said. Up to the left. You can go there. Tara said, you will have to jump around. So you will have to see that you are not there right behind you. Or you also should jump. Am I smoking yet? Purva Hasta said. Okay, let us start with 
yes, somebody is wiping their face. That is a good sign. So you are sweating. Your heart is beating faster. Yes. Yes. You are tired. Your mouth is becoming dry. Your eyes are opened more. Yes. Yes. Your hair is flying up. Yes. That is not a sign of anything. <laughs> it's just that you have not tackled your hair properly. That's all. Sit down now. What the corners? Now, the simple is that whatever you feel. Now, how do I know? That is one of the things. Yes, you are able to move your hands and legs. It is because of the bones. It is because of the muscles. It is because of the nerves. Now, how do I feel that I have nerves? I think that. She feels the pain. Sorry. No, no, no. I can I can see. I hit her. She feels the pain. I pinch her. She feels the pain. I press her. She feels the pressure. All these are sensations that you feel. You are happy. You smile. You are, you are uh, sad. You cry. You get irritated with me. You throw a stone at me. Yes, all those things are manifestations of your mind. Got it? Now, how all these the, the nervous system, so called that you feel, your heart was beating faster. Some of you were sweating profusely. Yes, and you become uh, you become tired. Imagine that if I made you 108 Surya Namaskars at a stretch, or 15 Surya Namaskars at a stretch, then you might start feeling all those things. Those are the signs that your nervous system is getting participated for your body to get accustomed to the kinetic motions that you are doing. When you are sitting upright now like this, is your heart beating faster? Those who did especially, got motions. Is your heart beating faster now? Has it settled down? Yes. Are you sweating now? Your hair is okay? You are not irritated now? Yes, you have calmed down. Which means that there is something inside your body that is telling you, let me please calm down. Now you are not going to do any more skeletal muscular work. So go back to the original normal state. That is another branch of your nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system that you would have heard about. That is the thing that is working, getting impacted. So there will be a balance in these two nervous systems, parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Now, uh, again, as I said, there are uh, posters that are there right uh, behind you. You can have a look around. What is the vertebral, how the vertebral column looks. How that is the real break for your information. Doctors, you might find it very silly or childish. But still, that is a real human brain. That is how your brain looks. No matter whatever says that you have no brain, don't believe them. We all have brain. Okay? That is a human brain. That line that what you see, that is a uh, line and the lobes. Uh, you have that bulky part you have on both the sides. No, they are called as hemispheres. Left, left and right part of your brain. Got it? And you have a chart on your nervous system. That is how your anatomy, your brain anatomy looks in this wall. The colorful pictures that you see here on the wall. You will have a brain anatomy where you see uh, the lobes. You have different lobes of your brain. Different parts. Lobes means different parts. You will not see a clear distinction, not colored like this in your brain like this. It is for our understanding. The human brain looks like that. But for our understanding, these are the lobes, different regions of the brain that is responsible for different actions that are things or that are happening in your body. So this is your uh, uh, brain. These are for uh, later you can look around uh, the different parts of the brain. Now this one, when you cross, when you cut the brain in, in the center, this is how it will look. That is a full brain. Now this midbrain, what you call as pituitary gland, brainstem, this uh, hypothalamus, thalamus, they are all part of the midbrain. The one which is there here, that is your forebrain, front brain. The one which is at the back is called as the uh, hind brain, back brain. Got it? Now which is in the center is that is called as your midbrain. Apart from that, you have so many loads that are responsible, which I am not going to talk to you about. It might be overwhelming for you. So that will be the basic things of your uh, nervous system. Why I am talking about your nervous system? Why am I telling you about the brain? Is that that is your ma 
master organ central nervous system comprises of your brain and your spinal cord the brain is here the nerve like the nerve your brain is here inside the skull and you have a spinal cord a spinal cord that is running in the center in between your vertebra so those those will be your bones vertebra vertebra they are going to be arranged on top of each other like this okay and there will be a hole in the center through which the spinal cord is going to run okay and don't think that the spinal cord is the is long no it is not that long it is just a small structure it is it is somewhere ends in your near your lumbar spine it is around only 45 cm long like how you have a scale you know that much on the width mean long so it is only till this much after which it is a nerve fibers a bunch of like how you have a ponytail you know <laughs> you have a ponytail you cut your hair that ponytail is what you find here at the end of the spinal cord okay uh, so this is how the nervous system is there are some nerves that are going to originate directly from your brain okay there are some nerves that are going to originate from your spinal cord names of which again i am not going to deal about it is too much okay so this is how you will have to remember brain and spinal cord is a central nervous system you are able to move your hands and legs that is because of the autonomous nervous system upper and peripheral nervous system that is another branch okay where you are able to move your hands and legs that is your peripheral nervous system you also have your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system that i told you about how do you feel these nerves you cannot uh, you cannot see it actually i mean you can see the nerves but then they don't have a board saying that i am sympathetic i am parasympathetic it based on their functions that they do okay now suppose like <coughs> uh, she doesn't know me i am a stranger from a tai now it's just to uh, understand to tell you how the nerves work before going into the asanas all, all these are very very basics exam basics abc kindergarten okay now i if i am a stranger to her now i know she is walking on the road i am trying to punch her what does she do she will get say that she will get hit or she will block herself she will get angry and she will hit me she will hit me back got it which means that there is something inside her body that is telling making her respond in such a way so information from the outside world goes to her brain that is one branch afferent nerves okay now from the brain she has uh, she has got to pass on the message to her hands to punch me back that is different branch different nerves okay? you have these afferent and efferent nerves so one part of the information goes from the outside world to your brain the other part for you to react accordingly the information goes to your brain to the rest of the body in order to move or to your organs in order to perform in that particular function afferent and efferent so these will be the simple basic things what you can apply in your asanas got it so far clear is there anything that uh, that makes it confusing for you she is talking blah, 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 blah. nothing like that no okay now tarasana now i will uh, begin with tarasana we will begin with doing asanas how to understand this uh, skeletal muscular system and nervous system now uh, tarasana will be the basic asana that you yes in any beginners class advanced class doesn't matter you begin with tarasana why <coughs> yes it is a basic for our standing asanas but why should it should be a basic why can't trikonasana be a basic for us it is a symmetrical pose uttanasana is symmetrical pashu uttanasana is symmetrical why should tadasana be a basic pose there must be a reason since you only asana the entire body organ is getting stretched no it is not getting stretched it is there as they are it is there as they are all the time you are standing upright 
This is our natural uh, position. This is the evolution given position for me. I don't walk on four legs. Am I right? I walk on two legs. So two legs, this will be a natural neutral position. How you will have a neutral gear in your car. Like that, Tadasan is your neutral gear. For you to understand what is normal. What is the right placement of your body, body parts? This is my hand, this is my stomach, this is my chest. Oh, this is where my head and chest should be. It should not be like this. So this is where you understand the basic alignment of your muscle fibers, your organ systems and your overall grosser body as well. Okay, now trichotacin. Yes, now she is stretching her hand. It is, yes, it is a grossly skeletal muscular system. It's already coming into picture. You know. Now you know how the muscle bones, uh, muscle fibers and your nerves. They are all coming into play. That is why she is able to stretch her arms. That is why she is able to stretch her legs. Got it? Now there will be somewhere that you will be bending. Where your legs are not getting straightened at all. Where your hands are not getting straightened at all. There will be some folds in your body. They are called as your joints. That they become a part of your skeletal system. Like how the bones are, joints are also a part of your skeletal system. Because of the joints, now everybody get up. Somebody is feeling sleepy, somebody is feeling uh, yawning. So I can see, I can make it out from here. Yes, everybody in Tata said? Got it? Stand upright now. Stand upright. Now, my condition is, you should not move anything from your body. No leg movement, no hand movement, but walk. Move now. Move. Ah, now walk. Move and walk. Yes? You are only able to move? What are your hands and legs doing? Are they straight? No. No. Yeah, bent. So it is because of the joints that you are able to move. <coughs> so mobility comes from because of your joints. So when you say that I want to increase my flexibility, it means that you will have to increase the mobility of your joints, not your muscle fibers. Muscle fibers they don't develop they don't develop flexibility. They develop elasticity. They are elastic in nature. They can stretch, they can contract and they can relax to some extent, not beyond the point. If it goes beyond the point, that is where you will tear, you will have muscle tear, you would have heard about it, no? Ligament tear, muscle tear, all those things they happen. That, that means that it goes, that stretching happens beyond the point, beyond its cap capability. Now you are not able to move because of the joints. Please understand that, okay? Now, do trichotacin, they are only do trichotacin. So now you know, if I want to have my legs and hands straight, that your joints should be firm. Now where is your joint that is, uh, those, whoever is not doing, no, you can sit down. To me, basa, whoever is not, you are not doing, you can sit down. You can sit down, no problem. Now technically, it is very simple. Pavitra, you told me a very simple thing. Because of the joints, I am able to move. Yes. Now I want everybody to straighten. You are all good students, huh? Sunita, thank you very much. <laughs> See, everybody is like straight. Everybody is hands and straight. Where will I find fault? Somebody do want that, you know, on purpose. <laughs> See, now I want you to straighten your legs. Straighten your arms. Head back. Rotate your chest. Rotate your abdomen. Don't look up at the ceiling. Eyes looking straight ahead. Breathe. Why is everybody holding your breath? This is one thing that I forgot. Many people are holding your breath. Smile and then do. If you are holding your breath, say ah and then do. Open your mouth. Swallow your saliva. Breathe. Yes, I am going to put you on hold now. Hold. Neutral gear hold. Now let's straight. Straightening happening. Hand straight. Elbows are straightened. Now, technically, it is supposed to be very easy. All these joints are straight. So, my hands are also straight, my legs are also straight. 
But is, is it that that your muscles, how many of you are able to feel the stretch in your hamstrings? A tightness in your hamstrings? Nobody. Wow. Nobody. Increase your distance between your hands and legs. Increase. Increase your distance. Now, I want everybody to raise your front foot up. Front foot up. Raise your toes up. No, full soles of the feet lift up. Increase. Increase the distance. Don't have it under, under distance. Now rotate your chest. Toes up. Toes up, soles up. Toes up, soles up. Now back leg also lift your toes up. Back leg also lift your toes up. Head back. Now inhale and go up. I'm not able to stand here for a long time. How many of you felt a stretch in your hands when you start? Back leg. <laughs> so technically, logically, it is very easy. I have joints, I have bones, I have muscles. So as per science, I should be capable of doing anything. But it is not the case now. Shishasen, get up. Who can do Shishasen? Shishasen? No? Against the wall, it is okay. Now I want somebody to those who are from let them do I want somebody to come and do Tarasana. Yes, you can see the similarity between these two. These two in Shishasan, she is doing Tadasan. Tadasan is the basic simple standing pose that you usually do. Now, Guruji used to say that Shishasan is your reverse Tadasan. Got it? So technically, when you, when I make her stand upside down, she becomes like this. But the placement of your organs, placement of your uh, things, they are all same. Because it is a symmetrical pose. You got it, no? You are able to relate. You will just have to use your imagination. But there is something different between this and this. I will be able to stand like this for such a long time. Give me 5 minutes. Give me 10 minutes. Give me 15 minutes. I will be able to stay here. Why not in this? Why does my back start fading after a point of time? Why does my leg becomes uh, becoming numb after a point of time? Why is my neck and shoulders becoming uh, heavy after a point of time? Why? Come down, sir. Yeah, same only. Oh. The musculature is the same. Blood flow, yes, you can give me such a logical thing. Your eyes are already becoming red. In Tadasan, you are all okay. It's technically the same. Back muscles are the same, head is there only, head is in line with the chest. So you should understand that asana gives you this perspective. Even though the Shishasan he is going to stand upright uh, in Shishasan, there is a different group of muscles from the back that is going to make him stand upright uh, inverted like this. The muscles that are making you stand upright in Tadasana are different when you stand upside down. That is how the body is. We have something called as gravity. Otherwise, I will fall down. If you have a ball, you have a. Let's give a marker now. You have a. I, when I drop this marker, it drops. So, it because of the gravity, it doesn't come back to me. Right? Or it doesn't float. Like how you. It floats in space. So, it is because of the earth's gravity that it is falling down. Now, that is the same thing that is happening in your Shishasan also. You might see that this is a, uh, this is a muscular system. Okay? Now, this is how the grossest of your muscle fibers uh, are uh, when you are standing upright. Now, imagine that the same poster. That I am inverting. If we go Shishasan, this is upright Tadasan. When I invert it, it becomes 
Shesha says, he went to the muscular chair from the skin might look the same, but the muscles that are going to hold your spine in an inverted position, they are different. They are much more deeper. It is no longer superficial muscles that are working. You have got deeper layers and layers and layers of muscles. You have about 600 to 700 muscles in your body. You have about 260 joints in your body. 360 joints. Huh? You have about 360 joints in your body. So imagine how much of muscles that are attached to those bones. How much of blood is going to be needed in order for you to function like that. How much of oxygen that you will need in order for you to survive and still work like this. So it's a whole lot of uh, biochemistry that is involved, getting involved. Got it? Now that is for your Shisha Asana and Tadasana. Who can do the Urdu Dhanurasana? Anybody can do Urdu Dhanurasana? Somebody, um, okay, uh, I need two or three people who can do some random asanas. Any asana, I will give it to your choice. Any random asana, come on. Anything. You do forward bending, you do twisting, you do inversions. Nobody is coming. I will pick that. I will pick up, you come and do, you come and do. Chalo, chala. There is no restriction. You do asana, whatever you like. I am not going to do anything. <laughs> Good, she has chosen for the technology, which is nice. Good, 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 good. Okay, so you can see all these asanas, the muscles that are taking part in this, they are different. Two other chitras. Uh, I might not say come up. Those who are feeling tired, you can come down. Okay? Now, remember what I told you, efferent and different? Frame to the Now, we uh, uh, Arthur Chandra said, do a wrong post type. Let your toes be here, let your toes be up, up, up. So, most of the times, our body behaves like this. Yes, the tendency of the lifted leg, it goes up. No matter what the teacher says, the toe should be pointing forward, the toe should be pointing forward. The teacher is going to tell you outside information. You are listening through your ears and it is going to your brain. So one part of your reference system is taken care of. That is your information that you are going to get. But your brain should send back the signal to her toes saying that the toe should be pointing forward. That is the other part of your nervous system that has to work. Different. Got it? But somehow, it is not as simple as it looks. We fail to do this. Our body just doesn't listen to us at all. It has got a mind on its own. So that way, you will have to, that is why we in Ayata Yoga system, you say that you will have to develop an inner eye. When you start looking at yourself, awareness, sensitivity, all those things have to be increased so that this toe, this leg as an entity starts responding to your brain. Then the information becomes complete. Otherwise, it is not complete. I might know that you are hearing, you are, it is reaching to your brain, but the teacher might not know. The teacher might say that you are not at all listening to me, she will get angry, I will get angry and I will shout at you. Your legs are not at all responding. Now you will have to figure out a way how to establish a connection between your brain and your toes. Okay? Come on. Adho Mukha Shwana said, join your legs together. Everybody do. Join your legs together. You also experience this on your own. Those who want to do, you do. How does your body doesn't listen to you at all? Why doesn't your body listen to you at all? Why? When? How? Join your legs together. Okay? Purdha Prasarita Ekapada Adhavakushwadasa. Lift your right leg up. Lift your right leg up. Why is your pelvis getting tilted? Why is your leg bending? I want your top leg should be straight and your top leg toes to be pointing down. Adhavakushwadasa. 
other of the Shwana set, tiny other of the Shwana set. You see where your toes are? It is pointing forward. I want you to maintain that toes down, maintain that front leg pointing down towards the floor, lift your right leg up. Maintain and lift. Why is it still turning? You see that your leg is not listening to you? Now, lift your left leg up. Look at all your legs, not my faces, so you might not see. Because I am not doing. Somebody's legs are bending, somebody's pelvis is tilting, somebody's toes is actually tilting. Come down. Knees down, take rest. Veera Badrasan 3. Veera Badrasan 3. Chalo, go. Lift your right leg up. Sorry, left leg up. You are able to, you are able to see, no? Yes, lift your right leg up. Now hands forward, bring your trunk down. Trunk down, trunk down, leg up. Trunk down, leg up. Now top leg, lift the neck toes, pointing down. Top neck toes, lift that pointing down. Down. The other side. Top leg, lift the toes up. Lift the toes down towards the floor. Lift that down towards the floor, trunk down, leg up. Trunk to parallel to the floor, lift your leg up. Down. Your legs were listening? No, no. Your trunk was listening? No. Then you should not scold your children. <laughs> the size is there. <laughs> I will also scold my children also. You are not at all listening to me. Guruji, you know, sit down. Sit in Bhattakonas. This is one of the stories. I, uh, stories that used to happen. <coughs> it's a break, mental break for you. So I will also give you a mental break so that it is not becoming over the mental. There was once a time that we were made to do at the Chandrasan like this. Guruji was there, he was teaching us. He was in a uh, practice session. Uh, he made us do at the Chandrasan. He told the same thing oh, the leg is taken up, your toes are turning, your knees are going that side. Crooked body, crooked mind, all of those things he, he told us. Whatever he said, our toes and big toe was not at all listening to us at all. It was just going on another direction, my body was going in another direction. Then he said, see, your own big toe is not listening to you. How do you expect something, something, big toe is something that you can see. That you can see with your own eyes, that something that you can touch. You can feel that itself we are not able to control. How do you expect you to understand prana? How do you expect your, for you to understand breath? Something that you cannot touch, something that you cannot see. That that is why uh, establishing a connection between your hands and legs. Why am I saying this? Skeletal muscular system, nervous system. Always come to The more as beginners you would have known that you will be made to do more movements. Static poses are very less in your beginners' classes. Where you will be told to do move, just move, move your hands and legs, move your hips, move your knees. That mobility creates flexibility in your joints. Why? For understanding asanas for yoga, skeletal muscular system. Your nervous system always comes first, along with your circulatory system. Now you can ask, without the supply of the breath, how will I move my hands and legs? Without breathing, how will I move my hands and legs? So you can understand the involvement of your respiratory system and your circulatory system also. And that is why everything comes together. Now we are all talking about your skin. Because that is something again you can see, you can touch, you can feel. That is a separate system on it itself, integumentary system. Now, Prikshasan. Prikshasan, chalo. Any balancing asana that you can do, she is going to do Prikshasan. Who is going to do Pakasan? Vishwamitrasan. Anybody? Vishwamitrasan. <laughs> no, I didn't do Vishwamitrasan. 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 Vasishtasan. Sorry, anybody do Vasishtasan. He is going he is doing Vasishtasan. Pakasan. Brikshasan. Artha Chandrasan. Artha Chandrasan Kara. 
So I will choose asanas that are ekdam basic that you do in any class, even in the beginners class, so that our understanding becomes easier. The first thing after tadasan probably you will do is rikshasan. Yes, you will do uttadasan. You will do this trikonas, uttita hasta padasan, pashma hasta padasan. Now here itself, what are the joints that you think that it is working? When you talk about skeletal muscular system, what are the joints that you think is working here in this asana? Hip joint. Hip joint. Okay. What are the joints? Knee joint, shoulder joint. Then up. This. This joint. Then ankle joint. Ankle joint. Leg joint. Finger joints. Why is nobody telling about spinal joints? Yes. Spinal column. <coughs> vertebral column. Vertebral column is not working? It's working. It's working, no? Yes, that is the biggest thing. You are able to intelligence. You are able to you, are, you have a big part. This is your spine. The name is called spine. You can see the spinal column there, vertebral column. You call. Today I will pay, pay much more extra attention to your spinal column because that is a request, one of the requests that I got from the students saying that please tell me about your spine and your uh, how it works around with your hands and legs. Got it? So your spine, that is going to give, that is, as I told you, that is what, take a break time. If you want to take a break, take a break. That is what is going to give you a form. You are able to stand upright because of that vertebral column. Got it? When she is doing forward bending asana, the shape of the spine changes. You have about 33 vertebra in your back. You have about you have about 33 vertebra, which means vertebra means they are wing like structures. They are stacked on one top of the other like this. And in between that two joints, you have this this structure, slip disc. You would have heard about that. So displacement of those this. They are called as like this. They, everything has to be in place. Got it? Now this is where your vertebral column is. This is your skull. This is your cervical spine. This is your thoracic spine. Thoracic spine is what is lies in between your shoulder joints. Got it? Thoracic spine. This is your lumbar spine. That there it has a it has an arch. This is your sacral spine. Okay? Caucasian region. Uh, they hold, you might not be able to feel it, you might not be able to see it because it is somewhere deep inside the body. So, this is how your vertebral column looks when she is standing upright. But, when I am standing, when I look at the vertebral column from the side, then it gives you a different purpose, different thing. Your so called neck is not convex, it is concave. Okay? Thoracic spine is actually naturally concave. Convex. That is why my back is this. It's convex shape. It is not concave. Okay? Lumbar spine is naturally concave, which means that it, it goes into the wall. It's this shape. That is why you have an arch. Sacrum spine, uh, it's not. Can you bring it in center? We can say that it is convex. It has been, uh, you can, you have the bones. Sacrum spine being attached to your pelvic bone. This is your pelvis. When you touch, this is your pelvic area. Hip, hip bone. Okay? In between these two hip bones, you will have the sacrum area. Somewhere deep inside is your tailbone area. You might not be able to feel it, but it is there. Okay? Now, the role of asanas is to maintain these natural curvatures. Whatever God has given you, that has to be maintained. But unfortunately, due to our lifestyle, due to our whatever deformities we have, they become disturbed. Okay? There might be plenty of reasons all the time. That is our usual thing. All the time. That becomes our work. Women, men, doesn't matter. But somehow, we tend to lose our natural curvatures of the spine. That is the reason why all these asanas exist. Where you restore 
talking about natural balances that you have in your spine. Thoracic spine is convex and it is more rigid. It cannot be flexible because there are more ribs that are attached to it. Got it? You have ribs being attached. You can see the ribs. These are your ribs. You see this? These are your ribs. The ribs are attached to your thoracic spine. It has to be naturally rigid. Otherwise, again, okay, slop. It cannot be more flexible. Your, uh, your lumbar spine, this has to be, you see, you see God's creation in this law. Why this uh, lumbar spine has to be free from all those things? Why can't we have the ribs here? And not here. Why can't my strong be here? Why can't my heart be here? It's a beautiful body plan that you have. It's God given. It's the natural thing. Whatever, where the organs are, where the different body parts are meant for a reason. You have ribs. They are meant for a reason. The heart, lungs, whatever organ systems are there, they are inside your ribs. This, your lumbar spine is not attached to any of the ribs because it has to accommodate your abdominal organs. You have to bend. You have to stand upright. You will have to move. I will have to twist. If I have, imagine if I have ribs here, I will not be able to do that. Okay, we will all become like aliens. You can imagine aliens, no? So like that. So everything is a body plan. This body plan is nature given. It is evolution given. It is beautiful. It is something that you should get fascinated about. Learning, uh, my job today is to just throw you that curiosity, nothing else. That implant has, oh, why am I like this? Why is my body behaving like this? That understanding, that seed of curiosity should arise in each and every one of you. Only then, if anything can be interesting. Otherwise, yoga is just, okay, I can go to gym. With some weights, I need not use my brain. I need not wonder why am I doing this. You can swim. They're all good exercises. So please understand me. I'm not getting them wrong. Please understand me that they are also good physical workouts. I'm not demeaning them. But yoga also exists for a reason. Why? Because that seed of curiosity, that seed of awareness, sensitivity, why you exist, why you behave like this. That reflection on yourself is there only in yoga and no other sense. That is why yoga is called as a Darshana Shastra. It is a reflection on yourself. The moment you see looking at yourself, then you will know why others behave like that. And that is the reason why you say yoga made me a better person. Why? It is that reason. Yoga made me reduce my temper. My digestion has improved. I am not getting any more headaches. My menstrual flow is regular now. My thyroid levels are normal. I am not uh, extremely diabetic. My diabetes is controlled. Why do you say all these things? Because somewhere, all this so-called skeletal muscular work has a bio creates a different biochemistry inside your body. Everything is changing inside your body microscopically, biochemically. That is why you say I am happy after the class. I am happy jumping up and down. Doesn't matter if you fall down. I want somebody to go. Just go. Jump up and down to the balance. Who will get you? Jump up and down and then come. Nobody wants to go. Even if you fall down, it's okay. Don't go. Even jump, just up and down. Just jump and up and down. For serious reasons, I'll give you something else to make you even more happy. No, you're not happy. Watching makes you happy. Okay, good. Watch. If watching makes you happy, watch. Otherwise, jump up and down. Just make a sign how it does. How much sign it does. You don't have to think more. Down. Whether you were able to reach up or not, that is what that was not my point. How do you feel now? Nice, right? Lighter? Those who jump up and down. 
I did task you whether you were able to do full up balance or not. I did task you whether you were able to go up or not. Was it a perfect full up balance or not? No. You were happy, you were happy that you attempted. You became lighter. Why? Your hands and legs are only doing no. Why should you feel like? What is feeling like? Your breath is feeling light. No, I don't think so. Your breath is not feeling light. You are gasping for more air. You are those who jump up and down. You are gasping for more air, which means that your your breath is not light. What is feeling light? Your hands and legs, or your mind? Mind. Your mind is feeling light. So somewhere, that there is a connection between the so-called skeletal muscular work, your nervous system, to your psychology, to your mind. So that unique combination is applicable, is there only in your work. I can proudly say that it is only there in my work. That I will take from. I'm too much egoistic in that. Okay, so that is very unique about Ayurveda yoga. So whenever you start doing asanas like this, start wondering why is your body behaving like this? Why is your legs and body not behaving like this? I want four of you to do Pashyamutana sen here, Ube uh, Pada Pushtasen. Muttanasan, who is the Uppa Pashya Muttanasan do? You can choose your own asanas. Two of you can do here. Two of you, uh, those who, who is doing Uttanasan here and Uppa Pata Gustasan come on the stage. Muttanasan, Uppa Pata Gustasan, who is the Uppa Pashya Muttanasan do? Whatever. Now it is the same asana. Like how I told you, Tadasana and Shishasana. Right? Uttanasana, it is the same asana that they are, these people are doing. But again, it's on a different axis. The same asana, when we put her in back, it becomes like this. The same asana, when I put her in legs, it becomes like this. The same asana, when I make her to stand on her buttocks, it becomes like this. But how your body responds? Logically, it should be the same thing only, no? Because it is the same joint that is working, it is the same muscular system that is working, it is the same nervous system that is working, but your body is behaving differently in all these asanas, even though the asana is the same. Why? Scientific reason, logical reason, come up. Scientific reason, logical reason, anything that you can tell me about. Spiritual reason, God is making me think you will Sorry? Gravity works. Okay. Do you think that gravity doesn't work in Pashamutarasin? It works. I think it is the area. Okay. Spine shape is different. Gravity is a good answer. Then, something related to this law. Different muscles. Different muscles. Same thing that I told you about. Something that is holding you in place, they are different. Okay? Urva Dhanurasin. One of you will do Urva Dhanurasin. One from the floor. One of you will do starting back touch. Who is going to do? Or I will do. And I am going to drop you. Need to drop that. Okay? You do Urva Dhanurasin. She is going from the floor. She is, she is reached to Urdu Dhanurasan from standing upright. Are they the same? Yes. Same. Rupa it is the same. On Rupa, on a Rupa scale, form scale, it is the same. But the feeling that you have, the uh, the, amor, the, the, the muscles that are spinal muscles, the vertebral column that I am telling you about, that participates from here is different from here. Come on, both of them. What is the point of doing the same asset from standing upright and standing down? Any 
Divide the Urdu Kalura Why should you waste my energy doing that? Shisha sent her back. Who is going to do? So, Urdu Kalura said you saw one from the floor, one from standing up. One little board? You can drop back. Drop. Now from here, go to Urdu Kalura. Is this the same? No, it's not. It's the, the root first, so for root of the crescent form, shape, it is the same. But the muscles that are participated, when you have, when you were lifting your come down there. When you were lifting down from the going up from the floor is more. The effort that you will have to put there is more. Why? Because you will have to beat the gravity. You understand? You will have to beat gravity, which is pulling you down, which is waiting to pull you down. But I have to fight the gravity for you to go up, for me to go up. So it's a lot different pair of back muscle, spinal muscles that are working when you are already upright and then going down. What modern science says it as anti-gravity muscles. We have something called as anti-gravity muscles. Gravity muscles. They are nothing but those muscles. Uh, of your spinal, spinal collar, uh, your buttocks, for example, they are all called as anti gravity muscles. They should stay in their place for you to stand upright. Otherwise, you will fall down. Imagine that if you don't have this many buttocks, beautiful buttocks, what will you do? Will you be able to sit? Will you be able to walk? No? Pushtrasan Tandrasan. Come. Ushtrasan, Dhanurasan. Somebody do Ushtrasan, Dhanurasan. Smiling. Only day. This is how the uh, spider. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the spider. All of it. This is not really, I am joking. It's literally called as horse tail. It's called as Poda Equina. I will not say it in medical terms. But your end of your spinal cord will. Uh, Will look like this one, where there is a bunch of root nerve tissues that are hiding. Come, oh, Yes, It is the same as it, but on a different plane. You are able to imagine, <laughs> but they are different. You are saying that this your neck is working better. You are able to arch back in ushtrasan much more better. Why is not coming with your dhanurasan? Why you are not able to see? Let me go back. Lift your top thighs up, lift your top thighs up, toes up towards the ceiling, roll your shoulders back, abdomen down, press your pubis down, lift your top thighs up, lift your top thighs up. They are not the same, no? Yeah. If I tell you, you stay in uh, Ushtrasa for one minute, you will be able to stay. With effort or without effort. But if I tell you, stay in Dhanurasa for one minute, will you be able to stay? It is the same as. So, the muscles that are participating in order to do this action towards gravity and anti gravity, they are completely different. That is how all these asanas work. Why the skeletal muscular system is very interesting? Because of this very simple aspect. Why the nervous system is very, is very uh, fascinating? Because of this aspect. I know that my I have to lift my top thighs up away from the floor. The brain it, it is receiving the information, but the brain is not ready to transmit the information to your top thighs, and that is why my legs are not at all getting lifted up. Again, your own thighs are not receiving. Your information is complete. Your loop is complete only when your body responds to whatever information your brain receives. Otherwise, everything is becomes incomplete. Okay? Now, uh, you, you, you would have heard, uh, there is one more thing that any other asana with the same different place that you would like to know. Any other asana, the same asana but on a different plane. Adho Mukhashwana asana, Nava asana. It's the same asana. The roof work. But why is Adhukta Shwanasan much more better than in Navasana? 
If I say B in Adhokashwanasan for one minute, I will be able to stay. If I say stay in Namasan for one minute, will you be able to stay? <coughs> your abdomen is already getting tightened up. Yes, your legs are crying. Please bring me down. Please bring me down. She is already. Okay, <laughs> stop. Everybody down. Yes? Now that is how it is the same muscle but your different body muscles they, part, they play a different role. And that is why so many groups of asanas exist. We have standing asanas, we have sitting asanas, we have twisting asanas, we have inversions, we have back bends, all different group of asanas, different varieties. If I tell you to have what you call rice daily throughout the year, will you like it? You will not like it, no? You will ask for variety. How you have different bodies and sabjis and parathas in your food. Like that, you also need some variety in your asanas as well. And that is the reason why you all these groups of asanas exist. When is the outcome good? Only when they work in combinations. Do not expect all these effects to come just lying down in Sutta Virasana. It doesn't happen. Standing asanas in combination with twistings. Standing asanas in combination with forward bends. Forward bends in combination with twistings. Inversions in combination with twistings. Supine asanas in combination with standing asanas. Sitting asanas in combination with standing asanas. Again, how all the different organs work together. All these group of asanas have to work together for you to become that is the reason why we have different groups of asanas, different varieties of asanas. The same asana, but on a different plane. Where each and every layer of your muscle fibers, they get access in different asanas. Some will be very superficial, some will be deeper, some will be intermediate, some will be core to the core. Now, after all this skeletal muscular system, you will have to reach your organs. Where does the organ come into picture? Bones are there. Organs are not connected to any of your bones. So how do they work? How does diabetes become better? They are not connected to any bones, no? No? Am I right? They are not connected to any of your muscular systems. Your organs that are there inside your body, they have their own functioning and their own things to do. How do they get that work then? It is through your nervous system. It is through your nervous system. Through your skeletal muscular system. For your organs to work, for your organic system to work, it is, the, it is with this help of these systems you will get an access. It is like a feedback. Now, if you like this lecture, you will tell us with the time, please have one more. So, it is a good feedback that you are giving. If you find this boring, what will you say? No, I don't want to listen to her any more nonsense. Please do yourself. Please teach me good asanas. That's a negative feedback. Right? Like on that, side. your organs or Sorry? On my side. <laughs> <laughs> you are the brain. You are the central nervous system. <laughs> you will have to pass on different, different work you will have to do. <laughs> and these are all limbs, neurons. Okay? Like that, you have a positive feedback and your negative feedback in your system as well. Something works good, it is good for your body, you get some information to your brain saying that please continue, keep on producing. That is why your housekeeping is so hot, what makes your body be alive. Whether you know it or you don't know it, you keep on functioning. You breathe, you are alive, your, your lungs are breathing, your heart is beating. They are all important reactions. Because no matter whether you pay attention to it or not, it just keeps on functioning. They are called as your housekeeping genes or your functions, okay, organs. They will have to function like that, continuously, because whether you like it or not, they will have to function. Okay? Now, there are some things that you can voluntarily look to. Move your hands and legs. Walk away from this hall. Stand upside down. These are called as your skeletal muscular system. That works. Can, muscle, it becomes so deeper to be very honest when you want to know more about it. But this is the most grossest that you can have. Okay? Anything else you would like to know? I know that it is uh, 
too broad, uh, very detailed, it's too vast to grasp everything at a stretch. So I will not move more than this. So Shri Shasan was one of the uh, somebody came to say Sarvangasan? Sir. Independent. Independent will do. Then we will come to support admissions. Sarvangasan Halasan. Now we saw the rest is up to your imagination now. You will have to imagine things. Why imagination comes? Imagination is a very beautiful thing that only humans can have. You are all listening. It's very unique to humans. Where you can imagine things. I imagine to be a superstar. I imagine meeting Shah Khan. I imagine, I can imagine buying a bigger house. I can imagine become a big, beautiful Rishi Kasat. Someday, you can imagine. No? That's the freedom that you have. So imagination is one of the very beautiful and unique things about human beings. So don't lose it. Age has got nothing to do with it. Now I want you to imagine that spinal problem, that skeletal system in all these aspects. So when you go back home, when you open light on yoga and look at different pictures of Guruji, I want you to imagine this. Look at the skeletal system. And imagine that skeletal system here in Sarvagasa. Look at the head, Samarishu Halasan, Tai, Sakita Tai, Nobody is doing Sakita Sarvagasa. I want you to imagine that skeletal muscular system with this Halasan. I want you to imagine that vertebral column, skull, with this. They are not the same. You see how your spine behaves in all these asanas, although they are all regarded as inversions. They are all different. Okay? Sarvangasan, for example, you see? Now, the back of the head. In Halasan, Sarvangasan, say to one the Sarvangasan, if I say, if I tell me one thing that is very common in between these asanas, what do you find? Back of the head and and neck, neck. Yes, the chin lock, the Janandra Bandha is very unique in this. Got it? So obviously, that so-called concave spine, your cervical spine, it is becoming. It is somewhere. It is getting restored. Restored. The loss of concavity of your cervical spine is bad. That is why you invite spondylitis, you have neck pain, you have shoulder pain. All these are common ailments that you have. Loss of lordosis is a very bad thing. So you want to restore your lordosis. These are the asanas that you will be doing. Because you will have to put the vertebra in place. Got it? So your chin lock. That is where your uh, your skeletal muscular system is. Let me talk about skeletal muscular system. That is where your neck is getting uh, there. Your back of the head is getting rested, which means according to the anatomy brain, anatomy your hind brain is touching the floor. Am I right? Yes. So which means your your back of the brain is going to get more red when you come out of the acid. That is why you become calmer. Now, it will be even more interesting to know what all these different parts of the brain are responsible for. You are happy because of some part of your brain. You are much more relaxed. They are, uh, your hind brain especially, they are responsible for your breathing, your sleep, your uh, heart rate. All these are relaxing things. Okay? Those things, basic qualities, the hind brain is going to be responsible. Okay? That is why all these asanas, after you come out, you feel relaxed. You feel calmer. Because the back brain is getting impacted. Got it? That is for the brain. Now for the spine. Back. Skeletal muscular system. Against gravity, you will have to lift all those muscles up. The spine has to be really up the upright. Leaving the 
neck muscle, neck bones, her vertebral column has got to be lifted up. So imagine how much the flesh, how much the muscles should be lifted up against gravity for her back to become upright like this. Again, it is a skeletal muscular body. Along with your nervous system, along with your circulatory system, all that. <coughs> now, here this is where your uh, um, thyroid glands and parathyroid glands are. Okay? So somewhere your endocrine system is also getting impacted. Is also getting impacted. What it? That is one. You say to the cervical acid. Now do you think, now what come to us? Go to us. This is also in question. That is also in question. Sarfangasin is there, halasin is there. But do you think that the effects of halasin and Saitubana Sarfangasin are the same? No? They are different? They are different. Because the position of the spine is different. Because the organs that are closer to the spine, they are getting acted on a different way. The nerves that are there, where the arch is coming, they are different. Got it? In Setu and the Sarvang acid, you see that there is a back, backward curvature. It's a concave back action. Which means that there is more arch near her kidneys. Got it? So there is a good concavity that is happening. There is a good pinch that is happening to your kidneys. In Halasin, it is a convex back. It is no longer a concave back. But she has to ascend her kidneys up in order to do halasin. So it's a different stretch of your kidneys that are getting after all there. So always asanas, especially your setu and the sarvangasin, it is very very good for your kidneys. Your abdomen is getting stretched there, your abdomen is getting contracted here. Your back muscles are getting lengthened there, here also it is lengthening, that is concave back but it is a convex back. It's a different structure. Come down if you want to take a break. Yes, so it's a different thing that has to work. Your buttocks, she has to put a lot of uh, effort for the, the, how the hamstrings and the gluteus works there is different from how it works in your alasin. So it's the same muscle, but it works in a different fashion. You will have to put effort in different areas in different asanas. So obviously your outcome will be the same. I mean, will be different. Okay, irrespective of your position of your head and your neck. Why? Because everything works together. We are not doing Setu Bandha Sarvanga Sen just for sleep alone. We are not doing Setu Bandha Sarvanga Sen or Halha Sen just to avoid thyroid or parathyroid glands alone. We are doing Sarvanga Sen, Sarva Anga Asen for your embodiment itself, for your full body. That is how your nervous system, your skeletal muscular system, your respiratory system, your endocrine system, your interventory system, whatever system it works. Everything works at a network. Okay? So I will finish off my presentation today with this. Sorry? People can be in Shavasana. Somebody in a comment to Shavasana. I want Shavasana. Somebody do vibratical. Can we do this bent leg? Can you have a stool or something chair so that she can do bent leg vibratical? In this stool, what? Shavasan? Vibratical. You do vibratical in here, she will do Shavasan. Or you do vibratical in here, she will lie down in Shavasan. So that's what I said here. Bend leg will bring the gummy, straight leg will bring the gummy and shavasana. So again, shavasana comes at the last. We bring the gummy comes at the last. Right? So you do how you have starters, main course, appetizers and desserts. These are meant to be the desserts. They are after which you don't need anything else at all. So this will be the final position. So which is a good thing because my presentation is also coming to an end. You need not end your work. Okay? She is doing uh, bent leg vipritakami. Krishna Dai is doing straight leg vipritakami and she is doing Shavasana. 
Now Shavasana, you can see her palms. They are not relaxed. Do you see that? They are curled. But if I look at that, I will obviously say that the fingers are not relaxed. Right? Looking at her legs, have her uh, rigid legs. If your legs are here, like this in Shavasana, I will obviously make it out that it is your legs are not relaxed. In Shavasana, it is where your, your hands, your legs, all the muscles of your body are relaxed. <coughs> Relaxation is a, is a uh, automatic process where you don't contract anything. That is why one of the instructions that comes from the teacher is to let go. Let go. Let what go? Let what go? Everything. Whatever is getting attached to you, just let it go. Surrender yourself to Mother Earth. That is one of the again instructions that is coming from your teachers. So that humility, that surrenderness should come for you to just be there. Imagine that you are floating on the air. You should try that. I have not tried it. But somewhere it is in my bucket list that I will have to do it. That somewhere I will have to jump on a trampoline, provided that it is going to take my weight. <laughs> that is one of my there in my bucket list. The other thing, I want to float in air. Ah, no more. That one I'm, I'm not scared. But there are some things that where you can just uh, fly up from there. No, that is going to push you up from there. I have seen it in uh, uh, shows, TV shows. So someday I would like to try that. That is where you know that you cannot do anything at all. Whatever you do, oh please God save me. Nothing happens. You just be there. That is letting go. Where nothing is going to hold you back, where no muscles in your body are going to hold you. That abhinivesha portion is not there. When you lose your abhinivesha, you lose, you have this lightness in your body. So that is where Shavasana comes into picture, where again, it is an ending asana, where everything goes back to its normal state. You have not done 108 Surya Namaskar, your sympathetic nervous system would have to be impacted. Now you go back to Shavasana, your parasympathetic nervous system comes back, comes spread so that your heartbeat, your respiration, your uh, uh, blood supply, your contraction of your muscles, they all go back to its normal state. And that is the reason why you do Shavasana at last, where everything head to toe, all molecules in your body, all muscle fibers in your body goes back to its normal state after which you are not supposed to do anything at all. Just go home, sleep, or cook. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is very like a bent leg. She has already slept. Now, the, the difference between this bent leg, preparing the kami, and straight leg, preparing the kami. Preparing the kami, I'm very sure that Sunita Tai would have told this. This is a very unique asana. It's a beautiful asana. Okay? Why it is very unique? Because of the combination of body parts and your factors that are unique in work. You have three curvatures. In your Viparitaka, three curvatures that are happening in your Viparitaka. One is here. Okay? This is one curvature. The second curvature that is happening is here of your spine. So you will have to imagine that vertebral cord, that bony body with this. You will have to use your imagination. So your second curvature happens here. The third curvature happens here. So one, two, three. So three places, your spine or your joint, you get a curvature. So, because of the curvature that is happening here, your groins are much more relaxed. So called the inguinal canal, your inguinal ligament, your inner thighs, they are all getting relaxed. Right? So they are all attached to your groin, your pelvic area, your uh, hip bones. But they are part of your hips, but they are tight ligaments to which all these muscle fibers are attached. So imagine that. So your groins are relaxed, your thigh muscles are relaxed, your calf muscles are relaxed. Because your calf muscles are relaxed, because of this groins are relaxed, your abdomen is much more softer. Your abdomen deflation is much more natural. Sometimes, sometimes when you do when you don't do it properly, you might get a abdomen puffing up in this bend, a straight leg version. You might feel a tightness in your abdomen when you don't do it properly. When you do it properly with all these three curvatures,
excess here, you will not have this puffing of your abdomen here. Your abdomen will naturally deflate, which means that all your abdominal organs will naturally move towards the lumbar spine, which is a good thing. Okay? So that is the difference, main thing. Because your abdomen is getting deflated, it is much more softer and calmer, your diaphragm is much more freer. Okay? There is a good separation of your chest cavity and your abdominal cavity. There is separation. Your diaphragm is freer and it spreads from center to the sides. Got it? So your diaphragm is getting taken care of. If the pressure on your diaphragm is lesser, the pressure on your heart is lesser. Got it? That is why the sarsen is also very good for your heart, cardiac muscles. That is one thing. The other thing, the top of your heart is facing down. This is called my heart this. Right? This is my top and this is my bottom. In this position, it becomes like this. So the top of your heart is facing the floor. Which means that it no longer has to be gravity. All the time I'm upright, my heart has to beat gravity for it to pump. It has to pump to blood for the blood supply to go till my legs. Here it need not pump that much. So that is why it is much more relaxing for your cardiac muscles as well. Thyroid glands, parathyroid glands is there. All your major arteries and veins, they pass on to this area. From your brain to your rest of the body, your heart, your lungs, wherever the lymphatic system so called works. It runs your major arteries, your major veins, your major lymphatic vessels, they all run through your neck. Okay? So it is good. One of the reasons why because of this head position, the drainage that is happening in your brain. Now, how you are all functioning, good things happen. Like that, bad things are also happening. How we all excrete. Yes, like that excretion happens in your cells also. Toxins, lactic acid, all the cellular metabolites, they also should be thrown out of the body. That toxins, your kidneys and your lymphatic system has to take care of. No matter whatever good things you want to accumulate, the bad things from your body has to be thrown out first. Only then the good things can enter. Okay? This is one of those asanas that throws out the bad matters from your body. Which lets you your body accept all the good things that are happening. And that is why you delivery the karni is so unique. Wonderful asana to end. Okay? So sometimes you will feel uh, again the back brain is there, chanatra mandal is there, the rest of the things is very, much more very similar to Setubanda Sarvangasan and uh, Sarvangasan that you do. Okay? Anything else? Baba. 